up and this morning instead of Cheryl, Maddie is going to uh, uh, run us through roll call and get us kicked off here. And if I were in your shoes, I would just let everyone in. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't even remember the names of people I've worked with for seven years. So. <laughs> All right. So online we have Cynthia Nesbitt, Sue Holden, Mel Fisher, Jason Hauser, Jenny Daniel, Irene Wara, uh, Kevin Hessler, Christina Duar. In the room we have Tim LaRoche, Vinny Pavlish, Carrie Powers, Alice and Franz. Um, Cheryl Hartman, Maddie Scott, Chris Lonsbury, and Commissioner Bureau. Excellent. Thank you. Nice job. Yeah. Have a quorum. Okay. Uh, is there any public comment on items not on today's agenda from anyone online? Okay. Seeing none, we will roll right into the consent agenda today. We have a very lengthy consent agenda, 20 items here, many of which are standard employment agreements. Is there anything that we need to devote additional discussion time and want to pull off the consent agenda? What do you think? None that I see. So I move to approve the consent agenda. We'll second that. Any further discussion or public comment on this 20 item consent agenda? Okay. Uh, Let's go ahead and vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that is approved. We will roll right into our action items today. We have five on the agenda, and the first begins with an open space bond project item brought to us by Kaylee. Yes, good morning. So this item is related to a city-initiated open space bond project. So this is the request for the county's county approval of the corner farm open space bond project and the city council and mayor approved this item at a hearing last month for the funding of um, fee title acquisition by trust montana for the in the amount of bond funding was three hundred and ten thousand toward that project. So as you remember from the interlocal agreement related to the 2018 open space bond, when the city approves a project, it then goes to the county and it is to, to the commissioners to concur, to decide whether or not to concur with the decision from city council on the open space bond expenditure. Happy to answer any questions about the project. Just to add one quick thing, commissioners here, just uh, for the record here, again, this is a project uh, out on the third and tower area. Um, Commissioner Slotnick is not actually an owner and has no interest in that project, even though he's not here today. Um, I won't be voting on the item, but just so that's clear, he does not have an interest uh, in this project. Also, again, referencing back, um, and Kaylee did a great job of that, referencing back to the um, interlocal agreement where this is actually the city approving the uh, use of that funds, and it's just really the county performing its piece because we are the issuer of the debt related to these projects um, as the, the issuing entity because it is a county-wide bond, not a city-only bond. So, Kaylee, will there be any other action items related to this that will come before us in the future? Um, I don't think so. There shouldn't be um, anything else. The end of this is usually the approval resolution. And then after that, we work with the city when they um, submit the invoices to us to actually expect, you know, cut the check. And that usually it just happens administratively. Questions? No, I'm excited to see this through as Housing, ag land, like checks so many boxes. And this is the first project like this, right? For these funds? Yeah, this is the first project, um, open space bond project that I've seen that works with this kind of newer model. And I think from my understanding as well, this is the first um, project where Trust Montana has been able to put in action this model that they've been really wanting to see happen, where they are able to do a fee title purchase of property 
um, and then lease it to a farmer to make sure it's consistently used for agricultural purposes. Um, it's a really unique and, and innovative model. Tip of the spear. Spear. I, I um, move that the board concur with the city council's approval of the corner farm open space bond project. Second that. Further discussion or public comment on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Tim, you're at bat here. Uh, thanks, Kaylee. You've got a couple items. Let's take these as a package. And okay. I'm going to have to refresh my memory because I could have sworn we voted on these items previously. Was that something different? We did. So that was the pre award. The pre award. <laughs> <laughs> okay. this, this, this is the final deal. Okay. Is yeah. there a post award? Uh, I can only hope. <laughs> Ah, yes. So she offered to um, package the two together so I could just do this once. Um, but I opted to have the pre award presented to you all first, just in case there were issues with um, with the award. And so um, this is the final award. So um, nothing has changed between the pre award and now. So I can re describe it if you'd like. But um, it's exactly the same as the pre award. Okay. Uh, maybe for the sake of folks who were not at the previous discussion, just a really high level, what does each of these chunks of money do? Okay, yeah, so the implementation grant is uh, roughly $4.8 million uh, that we'll use to hire a couple of mitigation specialists for fuel reduction work. The CWDG is a five-year timeline. And... Um, and then we'll support the Missoula Rural Fire Department's mitigation effort with some equipment. We'll purchase a chipper that uh, the county is in need of. Uh, and then a sub award will go to Swan Valley Connections for fuel reduction work up in the Condon area. And then uh, it provides a 75-25 cost share for homeowners to have fuel reduction work around their homes. <clears throat> The planning grant is $100,000 with a $75,000 match um, to go towards hiring a contractor to help us develop a new CWP, uh, Community Wildfire Protection Plan. Great. Any questions? Uh, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, the chipper is being acquired from uh, someone in Fargo, North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh, only slightly used. <laughs> Um, I have, I have nothing to add. I was trying to make a, a work of Prince reference in there, but I, 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 I couldn't do it, but, um, okay. I, I motion to approve items two and three. It's second it done. Second that, uh, further discussion or comment from anyone in the room or online. Seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay. Thanks, Tim. Thank you. Thank you. It's a good chunk of work to be had there yes oh, yes oh yes uh oh, wow it must be september yeah <laughs> september so um vinny is it you or uh, jason hauser who jason will... asked me to cover this um it's <laughs> it, 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 wise it, man which <laughs> does make sense because it's kind of it it comes from both of our departments um you know, we've talked about this a number of times. This is a use policy related to the courthouse specifically, and it divides the courthouse into different areas uh, and gives staff guidance on what to do, and then also retains the commission's authority to speak on behalf of the government itself um, under the court case that Brian and I have talked to you a number of different times. Um, we can get into the details of uh, the policy if you like, but truthfully, it's very similar to policies that you've looked at before. There are a few new areas and we took into consideration comments from um, the district court judges about their specific areas and how to include them in those conversations. Uh, apart from the purpose described in the policy, it fits into the con into three basic sorts of contexts that I think are important for you. The first one is it gives staff guidance on what to do when things ought to come to the board in the first place for a decision um, and uh, sort of the procedural um, elements of getting folks to use our public spaces uh, appropriately. Um, the second thing is to respect 
the history in Missoula of using public spaces for um, speech in a way that uh, has been the case as long as I've been here. And so it's still respectful of that tradition uh, as best it can. But then finally, under that short lift decision, it will help the county to retain its ability to speak in a way that you guys decide is the right thing to do or not to do if that's what your decision is. There aren't any, um, I know Dave, you asked if we could give you some standards for that. And the tr truth of the matter is that there won't be any standards because you as the deciders on this issue should be allowed to make that decision and to change, you know, as either your membership changes or just as you change yourself to uh, speak on behalf of the government or not speak. Uh, and clearly you've exercised that discretion in the past couple of different times. And I think we've received pretty positive feedback. At least one other lawyer in the community. I was at a public meeting where um, Josh Vandewettering, I think, came up and said, you guys do a good job being thoughtful about these sorts of things. So this is more procedural, but it is an important part of um, how we handle free speech in public spaces. And what is attachments one and two? Oh, today? sorry, I didn't print those. They're just the use forms. One of them is- Are they like super basic or what's- Yeah, what one of them's the Sophie Moise form. Uh, and that policy for the Sophie Moise room basically hasn't changed at all. Okay. Um, and it's still governed by the separate policy. The other one is a form that um, Hauser's been using. There are some very small differences to that, just to initial near um, insurance areas to help with risk okay. um, and make sure that we get insurance coverage when that is needed. But it's like a one page, who are you, what are you doing sort of a thing. And it gives Jason the ability to look at it and say, you know, this is one that the board should really weigh in on or not and not sort of bother you with the ones that are everybody would agree <laughs> you don't need to. <laughs> Is there anything, do, does it, so we're good to go or does this get reviewed every year? What? what, what I mean, it's, so it's it's the kind of, it's a policy so you could always review it depending okay, on Okay, but there's going. not, we're, we're not required to. No. Okay. No. Thank you so much for <laughs> slogging through this for the last couple of years. Yeah, well. I, it probably took longer than was necessary, strictly speaking. <laughs> well, it will be good to have this in place for the request that we uh, might see coming. Which yeah, thank you. We frequently do. Uh, yeah, much appreciated. I, I move to approve the courthouse uh, use policy. I will second that. Any further discussion or public comment from anyone online? We're in the room. Okay, seeing none, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you for your work on this. Okay, uh, last but not least, uh, Maddie, we have an appointment to the East Missoula Community Council to consider. Yes, so um, there is a partial active term um, through May 31st, 2025, and um, the current alternate submitted a letter of interest to move up. So if he is chosen to move up, that opens up his alternate spot, and that is through May 31st, 2026. Uh, you met with Cynthia Nesbitt. Um, and so, yeah, I'm requesting a board point a member to the regular member seat through May 31st, and then also an alternate. Okay. Sorry, what was the alternate's name? Who? Uh, John Shakus. Sorry. Shakus. <laughs> yeah. It is. Standard practice to move up an alternate, uh, usually. So, okay, if we move the alternate John up to active, to active, then and then the alternate seat would be open, and you met with the new applicant, Cynthia Nesbitt. Great. Okay, and then what sort of filing requirements have to happen? Remind me what has to happen, or are there none? Um, filing and with. When's the next uh, opportunity? For, so this would be, tell us the term. Yeah, thank uh, you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the regular and the uh, alternate position, because both of them would need to, uh, at the next available oh, opportunity, yes. file for so office. So they would file for office. Um, the active term would file, file for office in 2025. Okay. And the alternate would file in 2026. In Mar March or when? When? May. when May. Okay, so in May, so his term, if he moves into the active seat, yes. his term will end May 31st of 2025. If yes. he wishes to continue, he needs to file in May of 2025. Yes. But what's the election? School election? Or? So the special district elections special are what happened in May, which includes 
usually the schools as well um, in them. And so filing most likely opens in either December or January okay. for those yeah, weeks as far as when filing. Yeah. And closes in March, right? And then so, closes, uh, okay. clo no, closing for filing so the ballot can, can be printed would be March, would be the closing, mm -hmm. and then the ballot would go out in May. Uh, is that always ha is that the date for filing? So we can just tell everyone if you're interested in running or if, if it's you a, need to if file it's a special district or a school. Yes, but it is different. Like for your terms, for example, or other elected officials, the filing dates are actually different because your primary is in June, not May. Oh. And the same for the city, which has its primary in September and November. But the September. filing dates would always be the same for community council. Members. Yeah, they move by a couple of days. That's why I'm giving months instead of days because we're. But, yeah, that's yeah. that's. But, but the general time frame is yes. And does do we the count? Do we send out reminders of this? How 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 are people reminded about this? Bradley might. Yeah, Brad, as I said, yeah, yeah. Bradley for, does, for and also yeah. I post something on on board and everything like that. Yeah. Okay. Sue, I see you're out there. Is there anything that you'd like to add? No, just John's last name is Chasse. Oh, thank um, you. I heard what I was saying. Yeah, wrong. it's always it's it's always a tough one to get right the first and third and tenth time. Um, but thank you. I look forward to Cynthia coming on board. She's been a great asset to the East Missoula community. Um, has been very active excuse me, in the last couple of years. And with John moving up, um, I'm looking forward to that as well. So thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Sue. And Sue, how how do you say his last name again? Chasse. Chasse. -je. No, Chasse. it's French. It's S -S -E. Oh, OK, yeah. gotcha. Like Chasse. Sache, but not. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like kind of, yeah. OK. I move to uh, appoint uh, John Chasse to the active member and uh, Cynthia Nesbitt to the alternate. Second that. Any further discussion or public comment on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank and, you. And I don't know if in our letter to Cynthia we could put in a line that would. Uh, Sounds like she regularly attends anyway, but just encouraging her, even though she's uh, an alternate, that uh, uh, alternates are Very encouraged to attend, active. be active and attend all meetings. So, sure. okay. yes. Thank you for okay. that. Thank you for that. So there's nothing else that I'm seeing on the agenda. Anything that anyone else needs to bring up today or online? Okay, that's it for today. Adjourn. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.